My name is Amata, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, I am here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours, as well as a small sprinkle of gaming for our final item, which I just had to include because it did amuse me a little bit. So, what I have for you today, well, the first item is that Samsung is demonstrating a 64GB DDR4 memory module, which is pretty damn awesome. Windows Server 2019 is going to be coming out soon, but at a cost, as per usual. We also have some comments from NVIDIA regarding the release of 4K 144Hz G-Sync display displays. We also have some shops who may or may not have broken street date with the H370 and H310 chipset motherboards as they are now out for display in their shop. And the final item that I just couldn't help myself is actually an update regarding that whole Tomb Raider trilogy remaster thing. So as I said, let's kick things off with Samsung. As I said in my intro, Samsung is demonstrating a 64GB DDR4 memory module based on 16GB chips at the OCP US Summit. So this is actually 64GB RDIM and is designed as you might expect for mainstream servers. But eventually this is going to lead to some interesting movements in the tech industry as the design will lend itself to build 128GB and 256GB memory modules for high performance servers. So obviously this isn't for you or I, but as I always say, eventually this sort of high end tech will sort of trickle down a little bit to us and will help them kind of expand the memory that we can have even further obviously. We're not going to be getting 64 gig in one memory module anytime soon, but still. So, you might go, okay, where's the deets? Where's the deets? You know, where's the meat? Well, we've got these chips which are rated for DDR4 slash 2666 and are a rather measly 1.2 volts. Now, they are produced using an advanced manufacturing technology. Samsung are kind of being all hush hush about what that actually is, but it would be perfectly logical to make a not that wild guess and say it's probably 10 nm. What we do know, however, is whatever fabric fabrication process they're using has enabled 20% lower power consumption when compared to the same capacity on 8GB DDR4 chips. Now as already said, this technology is eventually going to lead to 128 and 256GB LR DIMMs and this could lead to some very very stacked Epic or Xeon servers because obviously they have 12 or 16 memory slots so if for example you had 256 gigabyte modules in all of them that is 4 terabytes per socket which is pretty insane and obviously would lend a huge advantage for all sorts of applications. Unfortunately there's no price tag available but given that again this is not for URI this is for the companies it's not really surprising that they haven't revealed it. Just to give an example of how much this is probably cost Crucial sells 128 8 gigabyte DDR4 LR DIM for four thousand dollars in retail. So something like this is probably going to be even higher than that, just to kind of paint you a picture of how much money we're talking about here. So still some pretty cool movements in the tech industry, even if it isn't really for you or I. I love seeing cool stuff like this, even if I'm not going to be able to get to play with it myself. It's still nice to see these next things being worked on. So let's begin our next topic, which is Windows Server 2019. So as I said in my introduction, we're most likely going to be seeing a price increase for Windows Server 2019. And even though it is called 2019, we're most likely going to be seeing it release in the second half of this year, according to the cloud blogs that Microsoft actually posted themselves. So we have a little bit of a quote here on the page which reads, quote, it is highly likely we will increase, pr increase pricing for Windows Server Client Access Licensing. We will provide more details when available. And obviously we are seeing an increase from the current price for Windows Server 2016, which is $6,155 for data center version. So just to give you an idea of the base level that we're going to be increasing from. But... Not exactly surprising to see an increase in price and wouldn't exactly be surprising either to see Microsoft trying to utilise Windows Server to push more customers towards Azure. Azure does actually have some pretty cool uses for back-end stuff. So I wouldn't be at all surprised to see that, but obviously we don't yet know how much it's going to cost. Now I have a bit of a statement here from Wes Miller who is Research VP with 
analyst firm Directions, who said, quote, I think that for organisations invested in Windows Server, this will just be another increase that most will absorb. I expect that we may see some messaging from Microsoft emphasising that moving workloads to Azure is one way to avoid this cost, since there is no concept of a Windows Server-based cal in Azure. So, Microsoft are kind of giving you both things, giving you an option, increasing the price for Windows Server 2019 and also going, hey, Azure, Azure is over here, it's all shiny and nice, woo. But apparently the first builds of Server OS are already being pushed onto the Windows Insider channel. Unsurprisingly, we're also seeing the ever popular virtualization and cloud playing an up role, um, playing a big, big role, excuse me, in the upcoming server refresh. So we're also going to be seeing Microsoft's warm, loving embrace extended towards Linux, as there's going to be support for shielded, shielded VMs, which is a security measure that Microsoft rolled out for Hyper-V back in Server 2016. And we're also going to be seeing WSL in Server 19, which basically means that admins can run Linux and Windows containers side by side. So some pretty nice features. Now, to round off this particular topic, I have a statement from Erin Chappell, who is Director of Program Management for Windows Server, and she said, quote, with Windows Server 2019 and Project Honolulu, customers will be able to easily integrate Azure services such as Azure Backup, Azure File Sync, Disaster Recovery, and much more, so they'll be able to leverage these Azure services without disrupting their applications and infrastructure. So once again, more sort of fuel to the fire that Microsoft is probably doing the predictable thing and utilize Azure because well why wouldn't they so let's move on to our next topic which is regarding Nvidia now for those of you who like to watch CES every year and of course I am definitely one of those people you definitely remember the reveal of Acer and Asus who unveiled prototype 27 inch 4k 144 Hz displays which made use of G-Sync HDR tech and they both promised to release them sometime later in 2017 and unfortunately both of them relied heavily upon a reference design developed by Nvidia and had similar specs but unfortunately both of these particular monitors had their launches delayed till 2018. However, Nvidia has said that they're confident that G-Sync HDR compatible displays will finally, finally be coming out this April. To be more specific, however, Nvidia said that G-Sync HDR displays are going to be shipping in Q1, and they mean fiscal quarter, not calendar quarter. And Nvidia's financial quarter one is ending on April 29th, 2018. So at the absolute pure latest, we're going to be seeing these monitors come out at the end of April. Now, obviously, given that these are, you know, 4K, 144 hertz with HDR, all the bells and whistles, neither of these monitors is directly cheap, but um, I think many gamers have had their eyes on these, especially if perhaps they're owners of the top end graphics cards, like say the 1080 Ti, or perhaps even the 1080. And of course that, very, very cool G-Sync is definitely a bonus, I will say. I've definitely been sold on the whole G-Sync, FreeSync thing after having actually experienced it for myself when we reviewed a FreeSync monitor, and I have seen G-Sync ones as well. It's definitely a worthy addition to your gaming monitor, that particular feature. I don't know if I'd pay the rumoured $1,500 for one of these monitors, but that's because I'm just generally stingy, to be honest with you. <laughs> but all jokes aside, let's move on to our next item, which is regarding Intel. So we have some pictures thanks to the retailer Notebook Spec who showed some photos on their official Facebook page that they now have H370 and H310 chipset motherboards out on their shelves. Now this is actually significantly early because, well, the official launch date is supposed to be the 2nd of April. Now obviously this might be a, something they've agreed with Intel or they might be breaking street date, but this seems a bit bold to do considering they posted it on their official Facebook page and this is not just like a two days before, this is quite a ways before the official launch date. So I would assume that this is probably a regional thing or something like that. But if you're in Thailand and you wanted to get your hands on these boards, then you can do so as they have pretty much the full range of motherboards from the top three board manufacturers. Not exactly setting the world alive, but something cool that I thought you guys might enjoy. And speaking of enjoy, our final topic regarding Tomb Raider. Now, as I said at the start of the video, I kind of included this because, well, to be honest, I wanted to. And it, I wanted to because it just amused me. Now, you remember how I discussed not too long ago how there was talk from Realtek VR that, yeah, we're working on PC remasters of the original trilogy. It's going to be great. And I was like, awesome. 
sounds good. Unfortunately, they're now in the bin because they were never official. Square Enix never sanctioned these. So these guys decided to start working on remasters without permission and then advertised it without permission and now Square Enix are like, you what? You what, mate? You what? So, unsurprisingly, all the videos of the remasters have been taken down and Realtek VR have announced that all work has been halted. So we have a bit of a statement here from Crystal Dynamics with the uh, DSO Gaming and they said, quote, While we always welcome passion and excitement for the Tomb Raider franchise, the remasters in question were initiated and advertised without seeking approval. As such, they were never officially sanctioned. Ensuring fans receive high quality gaming experience is at the heart of our mission as a company which requires all projects to go through proper channels. We are thrilled about the future of Tomb Raider and cannot thank fans enough for their continued support and excitement for the brand. So yeah, I'm not really sure what to make of this to be honest. This seems like a kind of tilting of the head and going, what did you expect? I don't understand. Like, part of me thinks this is some weird marketing stunt for the film or something. But this is the weirdest way to go about it if that's the case. Like, I don't even understand. <laughs> I just don't understand, okay? All I, all I did was, I could do was laugh because it's either that or just be like, I don't understand for hours on end as I rock back and, back and forth in the corner. But in all seriousness, uh, if this isn't some weird publicity stunt, then this is just amusing to me. I mean, yeah, it is disappointing that we're not getting a Tomb Raider remaster, but it is a little bit strange how they're like, yeah, let's make a remaster. Yeah, let's advertise it. Hey, uh, did we ever get permission? We didn't. Oh, what? Dude, come on. <laughs> you get my point, though. It's a, just... Just a very silly thing. Like obviously not been taken to court or anything like that. So you know it's all's well that ends well. Apart from the fact that I'm disappointed now that we're not getting a Tomb Raider remaster. No harm was done. Anyway, that's me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.